down a little bit into my own past, I'm going to take you to the past of someone we all know. I like to call her America. Um, and the only thing you need to know for this piece is that a shaker uh, used to be an occupation on the railroad. And what the shaker did is held this giant steel spike like a giant nail into a rock wall. And hammermen would come by and they'd slam it in and they'd drill this hole. And the shaker's job was to shake the, the loose rock from, from the rock, from the wall, in order to like drill a hole deep enough. They'd stuff that sucker with dynamite, light it, and that's how they'd build tunnels big enough to fit all the rail cars. Um, and so this is called the story of the Big Ben Tunnel, as told by Shaker, Little Bill. Well, post-Civil War, who do you think they call upon to turn the ash back to brick? No, sir. You don't need chains to keep a man in his place. A few coins will do you just fine. But when they promised us land for our work, we heard freedom. So we picked up spikes and shovels, man. We followed that railroad wherever we were told to place it. Our job was to see the mountains of West Virginia as clay, and some of us died squinting so hard, especially out here in the Big Ben Tunnel. We drove more than a mile deep into that hill. The only light we had was the one hitting our backs. That is, had not been for Mr. John Henry. <laughs> With a hammer in his hand, John, he had arms like dynamite tin bullwhips, fireflies bursting across his kneecaps. His slam sounded like a bullet coming fresh out of a revolver. <laughs> Glowing like a lantern so hot, it melted the air a dark red. But John's voice was as holy as the blue breeze fighting its way up that tunnel just to kiss our cheeks. There ain't no freedom in this work, brother. Oh. Freedom is when the clock runs out, when the only thing pushing against you is the wind, your daughter's hands, or your lover's lips. <laughs> John, he always liked to talk about Polly Ann like that truest woman I ever met. She used to come down to the tracks wearing her finest blue dress just so she could watch the rain dripping off of his chest. John, mm -hmm. the preacher of sweat, sermon to crash. Whenever you saw one of us fall, his voice would ring out like a church bell. Stand up, son. These rocks ain't shackles. Just a whole lot of dust that don't know where to part ways when it sees our footsteps. In fact, he even made Captain Tommy want to pick up a hammer. Skinny-armed white man, dog bark, throat, dog heart, yelling, good God, Mr. Henry, will you be careful now? What if them walls come caving in? Well, John, he just sing right back. Then I'll just lift this mountain with my hammer, Lord, Lord. Crumble this here rock with my hand. Wow. In fact, the only time I heard John stop singing was when the steam drill come. This man, Mr. George, he called himself, sitting high and mighty in this soft, soft seat, surrounded by all matters of levers and iron, sticking out like jail bars in this machine bigger than most of our houses when he stepped down. His skin pale, like I never learned how to sweat. He walked right up to Captain Tommy and he said, I got me a machine here, twice as efficient as them lazy niggas you got driving steel. Why, if you give me some money, you could send all those work donkeys home. I wanted to scrape my calluses against his silky skin, peel off the husk so he could feel what it's like to bleed. But John, he stepped between us and said, oh yeah, I got a better idea. Now, I ain't never heard of John being a gambling man before, but when he, when he said he needed a shaker, you better believe that I was the first one that stepped forward now in the tunnel. Black dust clouds forming overhead, every smack, pebbles and rock shards ripping by my ears into the air pocket of John's elbows. Every lift, his muscles swelled up, blood glowing through his skin, the color of molten iron. I couldn't even see that steam engine. Just heard its clock tick shatter, breathing down my neck, but John's voice, it rang out, come on, shaker! Spin that steel! Steady hands up, brother, we got a steam drill to put the shame! He swung so hard and so fast that the sparks started sticking to his hammer. I glad a lightning bolt when he pulled back. The sound of air splitting shot out down the tunnel like an echo of a storm against the valley. Blew Tommy's hat clean off, wrapped around Polly Ann's neck like a whisper. <laughs> and I used to think only God could make thunder. Now, when it was all said and done, John, he had drilled two seven-foot tunnels, one with each arm, and that steam drill, baby, just had its one nine feet to R14. But when John's veins had cooled off, his body hardened up, 
His heart could not find enough room to keep it beating against the anvil of his chest with only the strength to whisper. He motioned over to Polly Ann and said, The hammer crash was my first taste of God, the shadow of rock proof that our hands gave us a choice. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for what I had to do, Polly Ann. She just kissed his cheek, watched his eyes drag backwards. Mr. George, though, just step over his body, pull out his purse and say, Well, machine's still for sale, Tommy, unless you got another monster like that John Henry just lying around. But Polly Ann, she leapt up screaming, You listen here, Mr. Business Suit, Mr. Fabric Arms and Shiny Fingernails. Last I checked, I got hands, just like John Henry had hands, just like every man and woman here got hands and ain't no steam engine could brew a storm like the fury pouring out of my palms as she picked up that 20 pound hammer, drove a steel spike straight into that trap. Good as any man, blue dress, whipping in the hurricane wind of her hips, lightning pouring out of her pupils. Mr. George, he just stared right back, silent, like he could smell the rain coming. <laughs>